The one activity is called how we do. The second activity is called how we have to do. The difference between how we do and how we have to do. Or in other words, what we want to do and what we have to do. We will be able to understand the difference. Gradually, our activity will be shifted from the first to the second. In Sanskrit, the first is called Krita. The second is called Kratu. The first means labor for remuneration. The second word means ritual. The one activity is labor for remuneration. The second activity is what is called ritual. It is symbolized by ritualistic gatherings. You know how, how it is symbolized. There will be rituals conducted for seven days or three days or sometimes twelve days. People come there. Automatically they make arrangements for people who come there. Everyone brings what he has with him. They pull down everything there. And all these seven days, they have plenty to eat and drink. They have everything comfortable. They lead a life of community for seven days. They live in the holy awareness of God for seven days and they disperse. Yeah. The moment they go home, they have once again the obligatory duty. Labor for remuneration. Is it not the same food that they were eating the seven days? Physically and chemically, biochemically, it is the same food. But spiritually, it is not at all the same food. The difference is what is called consecrated. It is the result of their work and not at all an accepted remuneration. Everyone works, but he knows that it is not for remuneration. All people bring everything there. From all these things combined, they prepare the food. Mm -hmm. The spirit differs and that is what is required. It is not the detail of the activity that differs. What makes ritual is your mm -hmm. spirit of doing it. If there is a spirit of remuneration, it is labor. If there is a spirit of offering, it is ritual. Mm -hmm. and any good act can be ritualized to get ourselves trained from labor to ritual. This is what is called worship. This is the meaning of temple service. What for we worship God? What for we go to the temple or church and pray for God? Is it for God? Poor God, he feels lonely if we do not pray. For our growing awareness to God, we pray, not for God. We are not offering prayers for the, for, the say, for the benefit of God. It is all a training to transform the spirit of our work in the world. We have many defects and shortcomings in our daily routine. And our ritualization of work should neutralize all the sin of what we do. You know, there are called what, uh, there is what is called the domestic ritualistic activity in Indian tradition. An offering, a daily offering to the Deva is an ordained duty of a householder. When we are living in a village or a town or a city, it is our duty to worship God, not only in the church or temple, not only on the man-made altar, but to worship God in the form of the air around us by not creating some stinking nonsensical smells, by keeping cleanliness around ourselves and by doing something like incense. It is called ritual worship of God in the form of air. We are expected to make our offerings to the God in the form of water. That is keeping clean the water which we use and others have to use. And also our ritual to the earth, that is keeping our house and environment and surroundings clean. 
not an enforced cleanliness but if we do it a voluntary cleanliness it is called a ritualization of the daily routine and then while we are walking many insects are dying under our shoes in what way they are responsible we the advanced souls much yeah. advanced in evolution than insects have we not some duty towards them that is what the scriptures say so by way of our mental purification we are expected to offer some flour of cereals which in india they make in the form of designs before the compound and wherever there is a little altar in the house we are expected to clean it daily and make uh, beautiful designs with rice flour ants and insects come and take the grain this is called one type of ritual and then when we care for our dog and cat in the house it is another type of training to ritualize our work this is the way in which we are expected to train ourselves ritualizing our activity and then lord krishna in the bhagavad gita says see how the clouds rain and our seeds are germinated on this year do the cloud does the cloud have does the cloud anything to have from us are we in a position to help the cloud or remunerate it but still the cloud rain see how sunshine helps us gives life and invigorates us in what way it is obligated to us are we in a position to help the sunlight in any way or to remunerate the sunlight for what we have received why sunshine is behaving like that why the showers of the cloud behave like that why the seed germinates and multiplies into 10000 seeds each it is its nature and this nature is imbibed in every atom by the creator himself who is the seed of all this creation he has given this formula of seed and germination in every seed of every species and this earth why he does it because he is not in, in, in no way obligated to us and then what is our duty as a student of spiritualism if we have a bag full of seeds with us if we throw some seeds on the side then once again we have each seed giving 10000 seeds but suppose we eat away all these seeds without throwing on the ground tomorrow we have to die understand your work for others as a seed understand by doing something to others wherever you have no obligation to do you are throwing the seed in the right soil and good work is being multiplied 10000 fold it is due to such an activity of the devas that we are living on this earth honor the devas by your own behavior of imitating their spirit of work honor the devas by your own way of imitating the devas in the spirit of your work this is what is called ritual it is also called sacrifice and then what is due to us you will be given to you then it is called consecrated by god if you work for remuneration the remuneration you work you get is not at all consecrated because it is self conditioned so a true student of spiritualism is expected to get a transformation a complete transformation from remunerative work to ritualistic work this is what is called ritual in its true sense we have many types of rituals conducted for example freemasonry etc but the import is the same it is only to train ourselves into the real ritual of our daily routine when the daily routine is completely ritualized okay. then it is called god's work then it is called temple worship there comes a time in our maturity when our life is totally 
offered to the service of the Lord. Generally, we will understand that the Lord is existing in the form of so many people around us. We will learn how to speak to Him through these sons. And we will begin to listen to His voice through these sons. This is what is called ritual. It is one of the master keys for spiritualism. The result of the ritualization of life is all liberation, no self-conditioning, no fear, no anxiety, and no anger, no jealousy, no possessive instincts. Just living as a boy or a child lives. With all the maturity you have, you will live as joyfully as a child. This is the concept of ritual, the result of which is eternal joy and bliss, which is called liberation. It is a thing that happens to everyone, not only yourself, at some stage or other. It is one of the procedures of nature to teach us something through its mystic language. That means our plan should be respected when we lose our glamour towards our plan. Until then, nature contrives every time a disappointment. The moment the mind finds no difference between the two types of work, there will be no such tension and no such opposition at all. Until then, nature goes on creating obstacles. This is the spirit of it, and it is a thing which everyone experiences and everyone has to cross. Certainly, the moment our, the grip in our mind is totally loosened, yes, we can propose something, no, nothing wrong about it, but when something comes on the way, as long as we feel the tension of it, the cause of tension exists. The moment we begin to feel no difference between the two types of work, that is the work we propose and the work that others untimely propose to us. From the moment our mind finds no difference between the two types of work, such things never exist because it is what nature expects of us. And it becomes more prominent when we enter into the spiritual path. If, as long as one believes in it, one is allowed to experiment with his own beliefs and find out the truth of it. That is what this scripture says. That the hat which is fixed to my head is different from the hat which is fixed to your head. And the truth you believe and begin to experiment shows at every step solution to you. The truth which I believe and I proceed gives solution to me. That is how the creation is made. The nature has created me to believe and experiment with this and you to believe and experiment with that. That is the truth of it. One can have individual path to reach the rhythm, but one cannot have individual rhythm. Rhythm is universal, whereas the path may differ from person to person. But the awareness to reach the rhythm should be there. It leads everyone to the same rhythm. Everyone can make an approach according to his station of life. For example, a businessman can make a ritual of his own business. An employee can make a ritual of his employee in life. Both begin to live in the same rhythm. It is only the approach that differs from person to person. But the one rhythm is universal. In that, all of us begin to exist. One need not follow exactly the same detail which others follow. But it is enough if one is sincere and pure to exist check out his own ritual. When you are sincere and open-minded, your activity automatically will be rhythmic and it need not tally with the minor detail of others. 
the awareness should be there and the attitude should be maintained all the rest automatically follows the rhythm is the rhythm is not to be enforced by anyone it is an unfoldment from within yourself that begins to one works and attains artificially before he attains evolution enough to feel the good taste of it there is no use at all those who voluntarily attend they feel the taste of it and they can never be stopped that's the truth of it